Howdy everybody, Mr. Mark with you in the Physics Funhouse. Today we are studying Hooke's Law. Robert Hooke was an English contemporary of Sir Isaac Newton, um, and many of the things that we are going to study in Physics 1 that were attributed to Isaac Newton may have also been discovered by Robert Hooke. There were some accusations of plagiarism um, back in the days when these guys were kind of competitors. Um, you may be familiar with the name Robert Hooke from biology class because Robert Hooke was one of the first people to do studies of microscopic organisms using a microscope. And so there are probably some diagrams and things in your old biology book that were created back in the 17th century by Robert Hooke. Today we're studying Hooke's Law and it's called Hooke's Law because he originally published it as an anagram in order to prevent somebody else from stealing his law and publishing it first. After a year, he revealed that the anagram when unscrambled read in Latin, ut tensio sic vis, which means as the force, so the stretch. And so what is Hooke's Law all about? Why is it important? Um, first of all, this is an opportunity for us to actually learn how to graph and manipulate data in physics. So it's a germane thing to start with at the beginning of the year. More importantly and more generally, it gives us a way to measure force. A force is just a push or a pull, but it's really difficult to measure how big a push or pull is because there's no way to measure it directly. And so what Robert Hooke discovered was that the harder you pull a spring, the more it stretches. That may seem kind of intuitive to you. Yeah, you pull harder, it stretches more, but there's a mathematical relationship that we can leverage and then use to measure how big a force is. In order to do that, we need to have some sort of starting point though. So I'm not just gonna sit here and say, all right, I'm pulling this hard, now I'm pulling this hard, I'm pulling this hard. I'm gonna use something that is calibrated and known. So our goal is to figure out a way to relate these two variables so that we can get a general trend between force and stretch, see if they are actually proportional to each other, like when they're graphed, do they give us a straight line, and then can we use that to measure unknown forces. So here is our basic setup. I have here a physics stand with a pole attached to it. And then from that pole is hanging a red spring. The spring is up there at the top. And then from the other end of that spring, I can hang different size calibrated masses. So these things are already calibrated. I know how big their mass is. So let's just do a simple demonstration of that. You see that I've got a ruler, um, which is securely fastened to that stand by universal physics adhesive, also known as masking tape. And so when I get this thing steady and I use a ruler to kind of figure out where the, the bottom of this thing is, I can figure out how much this spring has stretched by. So it's not stretched yet, so I'm not gonna record anything. And so if I put, say, a 200 gram mass on there, like so, you will notice that it stretches by a little bit. And so we can use this mass to figure out the force of gravity pulling down on it. And then from there, we can get forces for our table. So let's talk about that a little bit before we actually start recording data. It's real easy to go between mass and force we add mass to our variables here. The first thing you need to know about mass and physics is that the unit we need to be using is the kilogram. So when I say that that was 200 grams, to convert grams to kilograms, I just move my decimal point one, two, three places to the left. That's a mass of 0.200 kilograms. So step one is to take the masses that I give you and then convert them to kilograms. Step two, to convert that to a force, you simply multiply that mass in kilograms by the gravitational field constant. The gravitational field constant on Earth has a value of 9.8 
newtons per kilogram. So for every kilogram of mass, it weighs approximately 10 more newtons. And so for the purposes of today's lab, this is kind of always going to be true in physics, we're just going to round 9.8 to 10 newtons per kilogram, and that way you don't spend a whole lot of time doing a bunch of calculations. So I can figure out the force exerted by gravity on this mass simply by taking the mass in kilograms, which is 0.2 in this case, multiplying that by 10 newtons per kilogram, Kilogram on top, kilogram on bottom. The kilograms cancel out, leaving me with a force of 2.0 newtons. And we'll get into a little bit later um, what the newton means. But right now, newton is just our unit of force. A unit of force you may also be familiar with would be the pound. The pound is a unit of force. So we're gonna create a data table and you definitely want to create your own data table. And this can be on the back of the piece of graph paper that you use to graph it. So you can write your data down now, take a picture with it, you're with your phone, and then flip it over to graph it when we get to that point right there. So for a force of 2.0 Newtons, and I can record my units up in the header of my table, that's perfectly fine. Let's measure how much the spring stretches now. So using my handy dandy ruler, kind of going across like that, that's a stretch of 46.9 centimeters. Forty six point nine centimeters. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add a mass column to my table over here. I'm gonna go ahead and write them in grams um, because I want you to practice converting from grams to kilograms and then doing this simple calculation right here. Um, so I'm going to fill in the mass in grams for you and the stretch, I'll measure that. Your job would then to be to calculate the force each time. So this was a mass of 200 grams. Okay, so let's choose um, a few more masses and let's kind of vary that. So if I put another 200 gram mass on there, that would give me a mass of 400 grams. And the corresponding stretch for that would be 54.8. If I add a 500 gram mass to that, that would give me a stretch of 58.7. Seven centimeters and that's a mass of 500 grams. If I add a 100 gram now this would be 600 grams. So 600 grams gives me a stretch of 62.5. Um, I can replace the 100 with a 200 gram mass. So 500 plus 200 would be 700. So when I do 700, that gives me a stretch of 66.1. 
Let's do two more. Um, I can add the 100 back. So 500 plus 200 plus 100 would be 800. So when I do 800, that gives me a stretch of 70.6 centimeters. I can replace that 100 with another 200. So now I get 900 grams. So that would be 74.1 centimeters. Now let's do a thousand grams. Kind of end right there. So I'm actually gonna take all of these things off and hang a big old giant 1,000 gram ass on there. See how far that big boy stretches it. All right, so with a thousand grams, which would be one kilogram, that looks like 78.3. 78.3 centimeters. Okay. So your job next would be to do these force calculations for all these different masses and fill in the force side of the table. After that, we want to create a graph of force versus stretch. We're gonna put force on the y-axis, stretch on the x-axis. So I'll show you guys how to do that here in a separate video, get the camera relined up and everything. Because our goal is to see if these numbers are actually proportional to these numbers. Now, you may be able to see that just by looking at the data table, but I highly doubt it. These numbers, eh, they're, they're, they're kind of nice, but they're not really nice. They're not really obvious to look at, like if this was two, four, six, and this was one, two, three. And so in order for us to make the determination, is the spring force actually proportional to the, to the stretch, we're gonna need to graph it. And so that's what we're going to do next. I'll be with you back. I'll be back with you in a few minutes.